Hello everybody! Welcome to another Vaheim episode. Today we're going to be learning all about the hoe. When you first make a workbench, you'll gain access to loads of different stuff that you can build. Just for some comparison, here's the normal build menu for items. And then you use a workbench under shelter and boom! You get a load more stuff. And there's a lot to unpack here, but this video is all going to be about this one, the hoe. First, I'd like to thank Jay Delonis because he commented suggesting to make a add something about crafting the hoe. So that's why I made this video. Thanks, Jay Delonis. You and other people help give me ideas to keep these videos coming. See how it says a farmer's tool for working the earth? That's actually really misleading because in Valheim, the hoe has basically nothing to do with farming. The cultivator is the farming item. Uh, somebody commented on one of the videos recently that it, like, it confuses people. And I was like, why do they think it's for farming? And then I looked at the hose description and I was like, ah, that's why they think it's for farming. <laughs> but this actually isn't. The hoe is a really useful item. To craft it, all you need is a workbench under shelter. So it needs to be under a roof and then two stone. I don't have two stone, so let's go grab that. And there we'll craft it. And just like other items, you can upgrade the hoe. And as you upgrade it, it's really cheap to upgrade. So you should just upgrade it because it'll last much longer. It has durability just like everything else, right? Once I use it for the first time, you'll see that it has used up some of its durability. It starts out with 200 and I think it can get like... There's a few different things that you can do with the hoe. There's actually four options. I'll show you all four of them. I don't have the other one showing right now, but you'll see what it is. The main use of the hoe is the level ground feature. This is what you'll usually be using it for. In Valheim, whenever you build, it's generally best to build on flat stuff. And if you ever look at the buildings that the game generates, they're always in a like little flat spot. And you can do the same sort of thing by using a hoe. So, We'll go up and go to this hill here, and let's say we want to make this area a little bit flatter. If I click right in front of me, it makes this flat area. But how did that work exactly? How did it decide to flatten it instead of raise it? When you look at the hoe, you'll see these sort of rippling circles. That's where it's going to level the ground to. And at first, it'll level it to wherever your character's feet are. So that's where it's trying to match. So if we go over here, it's trying to raise the ground as much as it can to reach the same spot your character's feet are on. Or the same height your character's feet are on. However, there are maximums for how much the hoe can raise things. So it won't just be able to magically make everything the same height. And what you'll find is that if you try to, you'll end up with these sort of hills. So what you need to do is actually stand on the lower part of the terrain, right? And then level things down a little bit. And this will help it so you can make more flat space. Because it means that the area that you couldn't flatten before because you couldn't raise it enough, well, now that's the right height. And you can just lower everything else a little bit. So it's better to lower it to the flat position than it is to raise it to the flat position. You can also hold down shift. And this is going to change how the hoe works. You can see that if I let go of shift, I'm going to try and bring the earth up to where my character's feet are. But when you hold shift, what it does is it tries to level it based on where the circle is. So if I come over here and I look up there, right? You see how the circle's going higher? If I click up there, it'll raise it up to that circle. See? And this allows us to get rid of steepness pretty easily. Holding down shift changes where the hoe levels the ground. When you're not holding down shift, the hoe will always try and bring down or up to your character's feet. Now, to use the raise ground feature, we'll have to go get some stone. To use the raise ground feature, you have to be in the proximity of a workbench unlike Paven or Level Ground. And the way this works is kind of tricky because it will raise the ground and it has nothing to do with your feet. It just kind of raises it, right? Once you've gotten one high spot, you can reduce the amount of stone that you need by looking at the edge like this and then clicking Raise Ground. 
this is gonna raise the ground more dramatically than if you're just doing it manually from the bottom. You'll use a lot more stone that way. Some people like to use this to make an impenetrable wall around their base or a moat. I personally find it more fun to build a really big flat area near your base, and then whenever a raid comes, you just come into the flat area and fight the monsters. Because the monsters will only attack your base if they can't attack you. So as long as you run out to the flat area, then you can just fight them with relative freedom in an arena, and then they're far away from your base and they won't destroy anything. And then you don't have to build this weird looking moat or terrain and anything like that. Next we have Pathan. Pathan is basically the same except level ground is bigger, okay? So Pathan is little. It does actually change the terrain a tiny, tiny bit, but it's so little that it's not even really noticeable. You can see here that it just basically looks like it just takes the grass away. And this is a really great way to make paths because all you have to do is run down the path once, and especially if you're rested, it doesn't really use that much stamina, and you can just keep on going. And then boom! Cool path. Once you progress to the Iron Age and you found only two iron, you'll be able to build a new kind of crafting bench called a stone cutter. The stone cutter is basically a workbench that enables you to build stone structures instead of wood. In addition to that, it allows you to make stone paved roads with the hoe. So now if we look at our hoe, we can see that there's actually four options for a paved road. And if we check it out, we see that it makes this super beautiful cobblestone path. Like that looks awesome. I mean, don't get me wrong, dirt paths in the meadows are pretty quaint, they're cool, but there's something about the cobblestone, especially because you can use it as a floor for your house. There's all sorts of cool stuff you can do with it. And as you can see, unfortunately, as soon as you're out of the way of the stone cutter, you can't place this, <laughs> which makes it kind of irritating to make really long cobblestone paths. Because when you're using the Pathan feature, you can just run along and you don't need to build any workbenches and you can make a really cool path, right? It's very convenient. Whereas cobblestone to keep rebuilding the stone cutter. So it, it means that you tend to see cobblestone just in people's bases if they're playing vanilla. And if you do just use the cobblestone, I encourage you to mix the two together. Because as you can see, it looks a bit weird to go from the grass to the cobblestone. That's not really that realistic, is it? Whereas if you make like a brown path first, right? Just a regular dirt path. And then you put cobblestone in the middle of it. You get this sort of effect where the edge, the edge of the path has that brown look and then it sort of naturally turns into the grass. It looks more realistic. Whereas when you just have the cobblestone, I don't know, but to me it looks like a wooden wool without any trim. It just looks a bit weird. You'll notice that Paved Road doesn't just put the cobblestone down. As you saw earlier, it also levels the terrain. So Paved Road is basically just level ground, except it changes the texture from the dirt texture, to the cobblestone texture. And you can still do the same thing by holding shift as you saw earlier in the video. The hoe has a couple other niche uses. For example, it's incredibly useful in the swamp for one main reason. The swamp has a lot of water and it's fine as long as it's not too deep. But once the swamp water is too deep, then you'll sheathe your weapon. And this is a pain, like in areas like this, it's really hard to fight, you move around really slowly. That's really not ideal. So what you can do is actually just explore the swamp and level the ground in front of you and stay near the sort of higher elevation areas. And this is gonna make it so you basically leave a path that you can run on and make sure that you're not fighting in the water. Another great use for the hoe is to actually fight the sirtlings that are in the swamp because they die in the water. So all you have to do is just make the land lower and then they'll come try and fight you and they'll just run into the water, right? See? So all you gotta do is avoid their fireballs and then eventually they're just gonna run into the water where you lowered the terrain and die. 
You can also make a kind of farm that'll automatically kill the Sirtling every single time that they spawn. I have a video all about that. The main drawback though is you have to be active in the region, otherwise they're not going to keep respawning. And also, the hoe has no benefit against the other monsters, so you'll still have to be able to protect yourself. Another great benefit of using the hoe in the swamp is that you're going to have to lug around a lot of iron. Your cart doesn't move as well up terrain, so you're effectively making it easier for you to take the iron out using the cart. Another biome that the hoe really shines in is the mountain. To understand why, you'll have to understand a basic part of climbing in Valheim. When you hold shift, you can basically run up and jump up anything, right? But you'll just slide back down, unless you're on a patch that has snow. So you see how that's a snow patch? Let's run up there, and I can just stop right here, and look at that, I won't slide down. So you basically climb the mountain by running from these spots to the next spot. But what if you have a long stretch like that, and there's nothing to grab. Well, that's where the hoe comes in. Look at this, you can just run up, and I'll just run up this sheer spot right here, and then let's say I'm running out of stamina right before I do, I just make a spot, and then boom. Look at that, I now have a step. And you can do this again. Let's do it right here, boom, we have a step. So the hoe is basically a climbing tool in the mountains. Arguably just as useful, maybe not more useful, as it is in the swamp. The hoe actually makes it quite easy to make paths in the side of large elevations. So you can see here, this is a pretty sheer cliff, right? Let's say that I wanted to get the cart through here, especially if it has something in it. Oh, that's not happening. But we can use the hoe and just look at our feet and we'll basically make these little paths. And this can allow us to much more easily navigate the mountain because now we can just come here, and if we really want to, we really want to be dedicated, we can make the path a little bit bigger, and then use a pickaxe to actually make it traversable with a cart. So the hoe is a really important part of being able to travel through the mountains with relative ease. The hoe is also really useful in essentially any situation in which you have to dig. It doesn't replace the pickaxe, but it does mean that you can use the pickaxe less. For example, here's the plains where you would normally drain these tar pits using a pickaxe. It won't perfectly drain it, but it'll get it started, so there's less of the tar to deal with. Sometimes it can work better to actually start in the tar and then level out like that. But as you can see, now the tar pit has started draining. And it drains surprisingly well this way. It doesn't look like it, right? Like this looks like nothing's coming through it, but apparently it is actually draining a bit. And now all we would need to do is just finish it off a little bit with the pickaxe. There's also other situations where you'd use it. For example, in the Black Forest, you might find copper nodes that are sort of in the edge of a mountain. And most players will just start mining at the copper node like this, we actually miss out on some copper when you do that because most of the node is actually underground. You usually only see the top half of it, right? So you can go around the node and level the ground around it. And this helps you get a sense of how big the copper node is without having to do any loud troll inducing mining. As you can see, this one in particular is quite large because once you find this edge, you see how it sort of goes down. That way you know that it doesn't pass the edge, so it only goes deeper, but you don't have to dig more this way or mine into this part. You know this is the end of the copper node, right? Thanks for watching, everybody! If you like this video, consider checking out my other Valheim content. I got loads of videos all about Valheim. And if you want to support my work, then consider purchasing your own dedicated server for Valheim from Zap. It's as little as $15, $16 per month, and this can be split between you and your friends, and it gives you guys a place where you can join, build stuff, they can join, build stuff, and it's just really awesome, because when you play Valheim alone, then you have to be there for other people to play on your world to join it. That's how it works normally. But when you get a dedicated server, people can just join it as long as you give them the password, and with that, 
that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! -bye.